You ever look at a piece of software in your home lab, something you know and love, and get that little thought in the back of your head? Hey, could I actually build a real business on this? Well, today, we're diving into that exact question, and we're focusing on a fan-favorite open-source platform, Proxmox. So that brings us to the core question, right? Is building a public-facing cloud service something that customers will pay for on a tool that was never really designed for it? Is that a brilliantly clever move, or is it just a complete recipe for disaster? Let's dig in. And this quote just nails it, doesn't it? It perfectly captures that builder's mindset. It's about seeing the potential that goes way beyond what something was originally made for and just asking, okay, how far can I actually push this thing? And the tool at the absolute center of this whole debate is Proxmox VE. Can this platform, a darling of the home lab community, really be the foundation for a commercial VPS hosting business? So for anyone who's not familiar, Proxmox is basically this really powerful, user-friendly management layer that sits on top of rock-solid, industry-standard virtualization tech like KVM. You can think of it as a beautiful command center for all your virtual machines. It's super robust, but here's the key. It was designed for internal IT, not for being the next big public cloud provider. And here's the kicker. This isn't just some hypothetical idea we're kicking around. People are out there, right now, actually doing this. It's happening in the wild. When this question was actually posted online, the reaction wasn't, you know, a hesitant, well, maybe. Nope. It was an immediate confident, we're already doing this. And that just proves there's this quiet, but very real, movement of people making it work. And we've got specific, real-world examples. This isn't just some abstract thing happening on the internet. It's powering actual businesses in real places, like this provider in the country of Georgia. Suddenly, the whole idea feels a lot more real, doesn't it? Now this, this is where it gets really interesting. This shows that a whole ecosystem is starting to form around this idea. It's not just a few lone wolves hacking things together anymore. You've got developers who are actively building commercial tools specifically to turn Proxmox into a business platform. And you know when the tool makers show up, you know the market is legit. And the sightings just keep rolling in. You've got legitimate providers like Netcetera and the UK, all the way down to some uh, shadier startups where the only way a customer finds out is when they reboot their server and see the Proxmox boot screen flash by. It's kind of like the unofficial engine for a surprisingly large chunk of the budget hosting world. Okay, so if people are really doing this, the big question is, how? How are they pulling it off? Well, the answer is they're essentially building a custom service layer right on top of Proxmox. And that process really has four key parts. First, you need templates to spin up new customer VMs in seconds. Second, you got to have automation to make those deployments consistent and repeatable. Third, you need a billing system, the glue that handles all the customers and payments. And finally, you have the really tricky part, the networking. This is where you have to manually build these secure virtual walls to keep all your customers totally separate from each other. And speaking of the tools you need, let's just add a little dose of reality here. While these billing platforms and front ends make it all possible, they're not always a walk in the park. This quote from a user about WHCMS is a perfect reminder that the do-it-yourself path often means you're working with pieces that have their own, let's call them, quirks. Okay, but all of this custom work begs a massive question, right? If you have to do all this, why not just use enterprise-grade software like OpenStack or CloudStack, which were literally designed from the ground up to do exactly this? And the answer in a word, is complexity. As this person points out, setting up OpenStack is, well, it's brutally difficult. Proxmox, on the other hand, you can have that up and running in a few hours. That gives you a path to getting your product to market that is just orders of magnitude faster. And this slide just lays out that fundamental choice perfectly. With Proxmox, you get this incredible speed right out of the gate, but you pay for it later by having to build all that extra plumbing yourself. With OpenStack, you suffer through a much longer, more painful setup, but you end up with a feature-complete platform from day one. Now, we have to be responsible here. That whole DIY plumbing part we just mentioned, it's not a trivial thing. Choosing to go the Proxmox route comes with some very real, very significant risks that you absolutely have to know about. See, Proxmox is missing a lot of key features you just take for granted in a multi-tenant environment. There's no built-in way to enforce resource limits on customers or to truly wall them off from each other. Scaling isn't automatic. You have to write your own code to balance the load across your servers. And yeah, the security implications, they're huge. 
Let's just pause on this for a second because this is the single biggest warning. You are taking a tool that was designed for a trusted internal network and you are exposing it directly to the public internet. One mistake, one vulnerability you miss, and it could literally be game over for your entire business and all of your customers. So, the final verdict. We've seen the pros, we've seen the cons. After all of that, where do we land? Is this crazy or is it crazy smart? And the answer, of course, is it's both. Whether this is a brilliantly clever move or terribly foolish idea depends completely on one thing, who you are. This approach is absolutely crazy smart for a very specific kind of builder. We're talking about the indie host, the bootstrap startup, the sysadmin who's turning a side hustle into a real business. It's for anyone who puts speed and low cost above everything else and who's willing to trade that out-of-the-box convenience for complete and total control. But, and this is a huge but, here is the non-negotiable catch. If you go down this road, you're not just a business owner. You are the chief architect, you are the system integrator, and you are the 24-7 on-call engineer for everything. You have to be deeply skilled and you have to be willing to live and breathe this is admin life. And I think this quote just sums it all up perfectly. Proxmox, by itself, isn't trying to be AWS, but in the hands of a really clever builder with the right scripts, with the right billing layer bolted on, it can punch way, way above its weight class. It can do a surprisingly good impersonation of the big guys. So I'll just leave you with this final thought. We often think smart means using the biggest, most complicated, most expensive tool for the job. But maybe, just maybe, for the right kind of builder, maybe real smarts is taking a simple, free tool and having the skill and the grit to make it do something truly extraordinary. What do you think? <laughs>